One of my favorite things to design is blog article layouts, so anytime I'm reading a blog, I'm carefully looking at exactly how they laid it out. This weekend, I came across an article on The Verge, and I really like the way they make their images and media pop out the side of the container of text. It's just a nice, subtle little effect that makes the blog article look a whole lot more polished. I have tried to accomplish this with Flexbox before, but to be honest, it's a little bit cumbersome to set up. Today, I thought I would tackle that using CSS Grid. Now, CSS Grid isn't native to generate blocks, at least not yet, but we can go in here and write some simple CSS to achieve this kind of look in just a few minutes using CSS Grid. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around and let's dive in. So we're gonna start here by going into our generate press elements, and we're gonna find our single post blog element. We'll go ahead and edit this. And you can see I've already gone ahead and set up this hero section here, which just includes the page title, the excerpt, the author information, and a featured image. All of this is contained here inside this container for my hero section. And we're just gonna be worrying about doing the post content here inside this video. So to do that, I'm gonna go underneath this container here and add a new section. I'm gonna type forward slash section. I have a shortcut here inside Text Expander, which just expands out a container with an inner container with all my default settings on it. I like to use this when I create new sections, that way I don't have to do all that stuff manually. Now to bring our content inside this post, we have to use the dynamic content block. So I'm gonna go here and click on the dynamic content and we're gonna choose the post content. So now if we hit update and we go back to the front end of our website and refresh, we should see it's now bringing in all the content from our blog post. So this is the starting place for us. I do need to set up one thing inside this element and then we can jump in and start getting all of this lined up. Inside here, I have a section with a container. This container is essentially my inner container that's controlling the width here of this section. And on this container, I'm gonna go down here and give it a class. For now, I'm just gonna call it blog content wrapper. We'll go ahead and hit update. We can go to the front end and jump inside the customizer here. All right, so we'll jump in here inside the additional CSS. Now I'm gonna be very explicit to target things just inside that blog content wrapper selector that we set up because I don't wanna affect any other templates or pages on our site. So it is gonna make our CSS a little bit longer and more explicit, but this is just gonna make sure we don't mess up anything else on our website. So to target the first item, I'm gonna do blog content wrapper. And inside that, we actually wanna target all the text from our blog post from that dynamic content block. And that has a default class of dynamic entry content. So with that written out, we can make sure we're targeting the right thing by doing a one pixel solid outline. And we can see here, it's targeting everything here inside of our dynamic entry content. So what we're gonna to wanna to do first is change the display to grid. So I'm gonna do a display and do grid. And you can see not a whole lot changed here. We did see a heading jump a little bit, but for the most part, everything went unchanged. Now to actually set up this grid area, we're gonna do a grid template columns, and we're gonna set up three columns. Essentially, we're gonna have a small left column, a middle column that has all of our content in it, and then a small right column that matches the width of our left column. So to do that, I'm gonna make this first column 1FR. I'm gonna do the middle column, which is all of our content, 65CH, which is 65 character units wide. And then I'm gonna do the right column one FR again, just to match the first column. Now you can see everything's gone kind of haywire here inside the builder, but don't worry, we're gonna be able to manipulate everything to get it back in place. Just to show you how this is working, I'm gonna go ahead and add a gap here of 40 pixels. And we can see because of this grid template columns we set up, we have a column here that is 1FR and it matches the column on the right hand side, which is also 1FR. And then in the middle, we have a column that's 65 CH wide, which is 65 character units, which is a really nice width to be able to read long form content. Now, unfortunately, because we've targeted this dynamic entry content and made it display grid, it's making all of its children grid items. So it's placing each one of these paragraphs in its own cell in the grid. Now, we're gonna have to fix that to get all of these in place. And it's a little bit of a hacky way, if I'm honest. If we were just writing this page out in HTML and CSS, we could actually do this a lot cleaner. But because we're having to use dynamic content through a block here inside WordPress, we're gonna have to get a little bit tricky. So what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm gonna target the blog content wrapper. I'm gonna target the dynamic 
entry content. And now I'm just going to add a star, which is going to target everything inside of it. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to tell it I want everything inside that grid to live inside the columns between two and three. So if we go back and look at our grid here, we can see we have the first edge, the second edge of a column, the third edge, and the fourth edge. So that's kind of how we're counting our columns here. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, everything inside of here, I want you to live in between number two, which is right here, and number three, which is right here. So to do that, we just do two over three. And now we can see that all of this content is living inside of that area. Now we do have a problem with our gap here because we wanted some gap in between the columns, but it's also putting gap in between each one of the rows. So to fix that, instead of using gap, I'm gonna use column hyphen gap. That's gonna make sure we're just adding gap to the columns and not to the rows. So now we can see all of our text is back here centered in the middle column of our grid, which is exactly what we wanted. But what we're really after is getting this image to break out of that container and go all the way to the left-hand side of our grid. To target that image, again, I'm gonna use blog content wrapper, I'm going to use dynamic entry content and now I'm going to use the GB block image selector. Now I am using a generate blocks image block for this image. If you're using the default WordPress block, then you might have to use a different selector here. So what we're going to do on this is instead of the grid column two over three, which this entire thing is using, we're going to say, but for the image, I want you to start at one and span all the way to three. So now you can see this image is starting over here on the left hand side and going all the way to the right hand side of our content here. If you remember back to the grid columns we set up, we had this first column here, the second column here, the third column over here, and our image is just spanning from the first all the way to the start of the third. I could change this to four and it would span all the way across our entire content width, but for the look we're going for today, I want this to be one over three. Now for a lot of people, this might be enough right here and you could stop customizing this further, but I actually wanted to do something a little bit fancier with this caption here. We can see the caption is actually spanning all the way the width of this image. And I thought it would be cool if the caption just lived over here in this first column. So it was kind of tucked away to the side. So let's go ahead and talk about how we might do that. What I actually ended up using was subgrid. You can see it doesn't have perfect browser support. We're at 79.3% of all browsers, but we can see with all the major browsers in the latest version, it does support it fine. Whether or not you want to use this on a production site is up to you, but I wanted to point that out. To use subgrid, what we're actually going to do is we're going to make the image itself a grid. So we're going to do a display of grid here. We can see nothing changed but we're gonna do a grid template columns and we're gonna do subgrid. Now, as soon as we do that, we can see everything kind of broke again. It put our image back inside of this container here. So we're gonna to have to re-declare this here in a second. Now, the reason it did this is because when you add the generate blocks block for an image, what you're bringing in is actually an image with a figure wrapped around it. So we actually have a couple different elements here and we turn that figure into a grid. So we need to go in here now and actually target the image inside that figure and make sure it goes back and stretches between the one and three column. So to make it a little bit easier and save you from seeing me type, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this here. And inside of it, I'm gonna target our image. Now, if we just do a quick check here, we can see one pixel solid outline. We're just targeting this image here. And what I'm gonna do is do another grid column. And again, I'm gonna do one over three. So now we're back to our image being in the right place, but our caption is still inside of this middle column. So we'll go ahead and just copy this entire selector and all these rules again, and we'll change out this image to fig caption, which is gonna target the caption here. Now, instead of it going from one to three, I just want it to span from one to two, which is gonna make it nested here inside this first column. Now this is almost the look I was going for, but because of the height of this caption, it's actually pushing my text down here. You can see if I change this back over, once this wraps to two lines, it's actually pushing this text down. And I really want the text to be tucked under the image as if this caption wasn't here. To do that, I need to take this caption out of the flow of content. 
Now, an easy way to do that is to position it absolutely. So I'm going to change this to position absolute. But you can see when we did that, our caption actually ran away. It's up here now at the top of this image. Now we want to be explicit about how we're positioning things absolutely because things can get kind of wonky pretty quickly. So I'm going to go back here to our generate block image selector and I'm going to make sure that this is set to a position of relative just to make sure that this caption is being positioned absolutely relative to this image. That way everything we're going to do going forward is based off of where this image is. So now inside of the position, I'm just going to say a top and to start off with, I'm going to say 100%. This will bring this caption back down to the bottom of the image. It's just going to make the top of the caption 100% down from the image. But actually, I want a little gap in between it too. So instead of doing just 100%, I'm going to do a calc. So inside of our parentheses here, I'm going to do 100% and I'm going to do plus 24 pixels. This will just match the value in between my image and the rest of my content here. So the caption lines up nicely horizontally compared to this text. Lastly, I do think the font size is a little bit big for these captions. So I'm going to change this to 0.8 rim just to make sure it looks nice there tucked in the corner. So to me, I think this is a really cool look. This way the image caption is still visible, but it's kind of tucked over to the side as kind of an aside to this image and doesn't block the flow of reading this content. Now, of course, the last thing we need to tackle here is mobile responsive. If we go in here by default to our tablet, we can see our caption is getting completely crushed. But other than that, things look pretty decent. But to be honest, we don't really even need any of this inside of our tablet version. If everything just went back to normal and stacked like it did before, that would actually be perfect. So all we need to do to make that happen is just take everything we wrote here today and wrap it inside of a media query that just targets the desktop version. To do that, I'm gonna do at media, I'm gonna open and close my parentheses, and I'm gonna do a min width of 1025 pixels. We'll open and close our curly brackets and place this close one at the very bottom here. And we can see everything's working fine here on desktop. Now, when we go to tablet, it's not sticking this caption on the side. It's not creating our three columns and all that because it's actually not targeting this once we get to a tablet version. Now I do have this information inside my hero set to a max width of 65 CH. So I need to go down here and do the same thing here for tablet. We could do that inside the builder, but while we're right here already writing CSS, let's just do another media query. This time I'm going to do a max width and we'll do 1024 pixels, open and close our curly brackets. And here we'll do our blog content wrapper and we'll do a max width of 65 CH, which we can see here brings our content back in line with what's inside of our hero. Now, if we go down to our mobile, it's gonna look great there too. And when we go back to desktop, all those rules from our desktop media query apply and everything looks just the way we left it. What's great about this solution is that the user doesn't have to remember to do anything. They'll just go in like normal and write their blog posts. And whenever they add an image or a caption to that image, all of these things are going to happen automatically without them having to set any kind of specific parameters on the images to make them break out. Now, there are other ways we could do this, of course, where we add a specific class to make an image break out. But in this use case, I thought it was really cool to have all this done automatically. Now, if you're new to CSS Grid, I'm afraid that this tutorial could have been a little bit overwhelming. I purposefully didn't go through and explain all the different ins and outs of CSS Grid because that takes quite a bit of time and it's a lot to digest. There are some great videos, which I'll link down in the video description below if you want to learn more about CSS Grid. But what I decided to do here is just show you some practical use cases of where I find CSS Grid to be really handy. We could have done all this in Flexbox, but I promise you it would have been a whole lot more work than setting it up in CSS Grid. Now, of course, CSS Grid isn't native to the builder inside Generate Blocks as of right now, but if I had to guess, I would say it's probably eventually going to come to Generate Blocks. It's starting to come to other builders like Elementor, and there's just so many advantages in layouts like this where CSS Grid is really superior to Flexbox. So I thought I'd start doing a few tutorials on it now, even though we're having to write it all out in CSS. So when that eventually does come to Generate Blocks, you'll be a little bit more familiar and be able to use it to your advantage. 
If you got some value out of this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to see future content, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.